point, uh, uh, Philip, um, I have your slides up on the screen now. Okay, thanks, Jason. Um, okay, this will be an introduction to open source software defined radio, and we'll talk a little bit. Go ahead and flip the slide, and we'll talk a little bit about what software radio is. Um, that'll kind of expand on what Bob covered earlier in his talk. Uh, a little bit about why it's important, and then we'll talk about some projects that I've worked with um, with the Beagle Board. Uh, next slide. Um, okay, so to, to talk about software radio, we have to talk about what hardware radio is. Um, radio obviously was invented in the late 1800s by various people at various times, and since that time, radio has really evolved from um, something that was practical application into something that you know is now an integral part of our lives. After all, I'm speaking to my cell phone with my laptop using a wireless network. Um, they started with very simple modulation formats, Morse code, which is on-off keying, um, AM audio, which is fairly simple, FM audio, which is a more complicated modulation format. And we've moved to digital links, and then we have wireless networks, where we, we, we have uh, collections of radios working together to move data around. Um, but the common thread here is the radios, every different radio has a different hardware implementation. There's very little sharing of um, radio hardware between the different radios. This isn't entirely true, but basically your AM, FM radio was most likely um, an AM radio and an FM radio in the same box. So you had two radios, one box. Um, and really, this technology is very mature. They're excellent products. Your cell phones, you think they have a lot of software in them, but the radios are really basically just hardware-defined radios in ASICs. Next slide. Sorry about the pauses. It takes a while for my screen to update. OK, so what's wrong with hardware-defined radios? They're so great. Um, really, the problem is the one radio, one function. Um, we have our GSM and uh, CDMA cell phones where uh, if you want to go to Europe and you're a Verizon customer you're using a CDMA phone, you have to buy a phone from Verizon that has the CDMA radio and the GSM radio in it. So you, there's very little flexibility in the radio. And the example that gets used a lot in the public safety industry um, in Virginia, the state I live in, uh, there are 100 agencies with purchasing authority. So they all buy different radios. And invariably, the proprietary vendors of radios like to make it so that you have to buy their radio forever. And they do that by making them not quite compatible with the other guy's radios. So if you have uh, a guy in one county has to drive to the next county, chances are his radio just won't work. And we'll have to deal with that. And there are various efforts to try to address this uh, problem. But uh, the next slide. Um, Okay, so this brings us, you know, what is software-defined radio? Um, as anyone with a double-E degree learns, uh, when you're getting an electronics engineering degree, you're taking a lot of math classes. So the resistors, the capacitors, the inductors, the transistors, they all have, you know, mathematical representations. So at some point, we had computers that are very good at doing math. So the idea, someone that has the bright idea, uh, and do the math in um, the digital systems. So we have uh, FPGAs, QPP processors, digital signal processors. So the idea is we come up with one set of hardware that can implement many different radio standards, um, this being a lightning talk is a gross oversimplification. But the idea here is now I can have one box of hardware that can do many different radio functions. And as radio standards change, you could then, instead of changing out your hardware completely, you could update the software, which would, of course, annoy the hardware vendors because now they can't sell you their new hardware every year. But, you know, that's a business model issue. Um, okay, so the next slide. So hopefully now we have some basic understanding of what software-defined radio is. And... Uh, you know, fortunately, the open source guys have picked it up. 
and we'll talk a little bit about GNU Radio, which is a widely used um, package for doing software radio. It comes from desktop PCs, which makes it um, kind of a strange fit for this particular talk. But some of my work has been to get it to run on the OMAP3 processor. Others have run it on the cell for some other applications. Um, but I had it running on an OMAP3. Uh, one of the nice things about GNU Radio is they're not tied to any particular architecture. Um, they can try out ideas for implementing software radios and dispose of failed ideas, try new ones, so you have a good open source effort at developing a software architecture for doing software radios, as opposed to some of the other efforts where they have standards and implementations and are not very good at evolving. Um, and the GNU Radio user community is just a broad spectrum of uh, software radio um, users. Uh, next slide. OK, so part of the trouble with doing software radio is you have to digitize the RF. And in the earlier talk on the Beagle Brick, uh, we saw some of the amateur-oriented um, SDR hardware. And basically what they're doing is down converting narrow slices of the amateur bands to audio frequencies and using the sound subsystems to do the digitization of the RF. And this works very well for the amateur standards because they're all very narrow band standards. Um, so obviously, you know, hardware can be open to. We, we know that. And several projects have cropped up to uh, supply more flexible hardware, both on digital, for using uh, with new radio and other projects. Let's see the next slide. Uh, OK, so on the left there, this is an old bike from when I was doing my master's work. Um, but I didn't want to use the stock USERP. Uh, USRP is usually pronounced USERP. Um, on the left is the USRP. It connects to the hardware, the, the PC, with a USB cable. It has positions for four daughter boards to transmit to receive. So they provide the actual RF interface. And there are several different um, boards available to cover uh, several different frequency bands, mostly in the ISM bands, 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, some of the other cover cellular bands and interesting things like that. Uh, just for historical reference, on the right is the uh, OMAP starter kit with the LCD panel on it. I never really did get that connection to work properly because uh, it's 2.0 only. Uh, next slide. 